Happy Tuesday, Transformers. I am so honored to be with you again this morning. My name is Philippa Tay, and today I will be talking about wells as a place of provision. Now, before I proceed, I just want to add something to what we spoke about yesterday. Yesterday, we were talking about wells as a place of encounter. But one thing that I would encourage you to study in your own time is the significance of water in the Word of God. It's a word study that you can do. You can use your Bible concordance and dictionary. You can use the resources available online. Even if you have a good Bible that has the scripture references at the bottom of the page or at the back, take the time to study the significance of water in the Word of God. My nine-year-old would say that water is life. 95% of your body is water, and it covers a proportion of our planet, the greater proportion of our planet is covered by water. So for humanity, water is life. And it is the same with Isaac in Genesis 26. But today I want us to go back because the Bible says that Isaac was in a famine just as his father Abraham. I want us to go back and look at how Abraham dealt with that season of his life. We are still in the book of Genesis but we are going to be moving from Genesis 18 to Genesis 20, where we shall rest and proceed with today's lesson. Abraham responded to famine and lean times by moving around. There's an old song called Papa Was a Rolling Stone, and I think that is an apt description of Abraham. When things got tough, or even when he was a bit bored, with one place where he was at. He moved. That's why dwelling in tents was so, was such a good thing because all he had to do was fold it up, pack it up and tell his people, here we go again. But that nomadic lifestyle was very restless. And I don't know if it's because I'm a woman, but I would look at it and wonder, did Sarah never desire to put down roots? God had given them vast, pieces of land. He had given them as far as their eye could see. But they kept moving from one place to another. If you read in Genesis 18, it says that Abraham and Sarah were in Mamre, where the Lord visited them and reminded them of the promise, the promised child. In fact, God gave them a prophetic word that that child was soon to come. By the time we get to Genesis 20, Abraham had moved from Mamre and gone south, and moved to Kadesh, then moved to Shur, and where does he find himself fin finally? He finds himself in Gerar, back in Abimelech's backyard. Now, as we said yesterday, cities are very comfortable because you can find all the amenities that your heart desire. But that, that, but as you find all the amenities that your hearts desire, you put yourself under the authority of the kingdom ruling in that area. And it, it can expose you to problems. We are in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 2. Abraham tells Abimelech that Sarah is his sister because he feared for his life. So as was the custom of kings in that day, when they saw a beautiful woman, they took her and added her to their harem. Abraham puts his wife and the promise that she was carrying in jeopardy because he was a coward and because he was afraid. Remember, only two chapters ago, God reminded him and said that Isaac was coming soon. So if I do my math correctly, Sarah might already have been Either she's pregnant or she was about to get pregnant, according to the mathematics of God. But here she is. She finds herself trapped in Abimelech's court because Abraham was cowardly and said, she is my sister. But even after falling short, God caused Abraham's enemies to bless him. We're going to read Genesis chapter 20 from verse 14 to 16. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham. 
and he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. And thus she was rebuked. The Bible tells us that Abraham made a miscalculation that caused Sarah to be put in a compromising position. But even in that place, the Lord used Abraham's enemies to pour wealth and provision into his life. Child of God, sometimes when God wants to bless you, even when you mess up, the blessing will come. Because even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. But I want to call you to two words of caution from this word that we have read today. The first thing is that we as people of God can cause damage to our community. We can cause people to sin when we do not walk in the truth. Because Abraham lied, if any man in Abimelech's house or in that city, if any man touched Sarah, they would have been put to death. That's what God told Abimelech in that dream. So the things that you do when your pastor is not seeing you, when your cell group leader does not see you, the things that you do out in the world where people may know or not know that you are born again, they can cause real damage to those who are observing you. We have this word in Kenyan lingo. It's called being opaque. As a child of promise, if you live an opaque life, you will bring death upon your community. You will cause people to reject the faith. You will cause people to reject Jesus because of the way you're walking. So my challenge to you this year, may 2023 be a year free of compromise. When God looks at you, may he be able to say, this is my son who I am, in whom I am well pleased. Even in the places where we have fallen short, may we be gracious enough to go before God in repentance that his purposes in our lives may, fulfilled, may be fulfilled. Even in the times when we have fallen short, may we be gracious enough to go before God that his purposes in our life may be fulfilled. Another thing I want you to think about this morning is that when God gives you a promise, a purpose, a word, like the word we have received about redigging and repossessing, don't sell it so cheaply. As a wife, I am surprised that Abraham would give up his wife into such a situation. God had given him a promise of a child. Who knows what state Sarah was in at that time? But she found herself in a place where she was un unprotected and at the mercy of a Philistine king. When God gives you a word, don't take it for granted. Don't sell it cheaply. Value that word. Hold it close to you. Study about that word. Meditate upon that word. Redigging and repossessing, they are very long words, but God is calling you to dig deeper in him and seek after him and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what this word means, not just to Deliverance Church International, but to you. The purpose in 2023 should also be to trust God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. There's a way that sometimes we say at Kenyans, kila kitu ikona ujanja wake. And that is Greek, meaning that every, everything has its own way that it can be manipulated and connived and made to work. But in the kingdom of God, the end does not justify the means. The Bible has told us in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, that we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart lean not on our own understanding. Sometimes when we have a promise, we look for our own ways to bring that promise to pass. May we not do that this year. May we go back to God, the author of the promise, to find out how we should walk, where we should live, where we should go, where we should raise our families, because he is the one who has given us that word. 
and he will watch that word to perform it. The Bible says that word will not return to him void, but, he will, that, but that it will perform that purpose in which it was sent forth. So yesterday we spoke about encounter. But today I want you to note that from God's instruction in verse 1 and 2 of Genesis 26, Isaac came to obey that word in verse 12. And in his obedience, provision finally came. I think we better read that word. Let's go to Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper, that's verse 13, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Verse 14, he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. And so the Philistines envied him. After Isaac finally obeyed the word of the Lord, provision came. And he found his Rehoboth soon after. The great thing about inheriting wealth is that you do not only drink for a day, but you have the potential to drink for a lifetime. When Isaac obeyed and God brought provision, he also uncovered the wells of his father and he was able to be safeguarded from famine for the rest of his life because he redug and repossessed his father's wells. So Abraham did not only leave wells, but he left Isaac the blueprint of redigging those wells. And that is what God is trying to do with us this year. He not only wants to provide for you, he wants to provide for you in such a way that the generations that come after you will be drinking from the wells that you uncover. So even as we come to the end of today's study, I want to call to your attention to Genesis 26 and verse 32. I won't read it, but it says that Isaac's servants found another well after he had redug Rehoboth and found his rest, after he had built an altar to the Lord at Beersheba, they dug and found a new well that his father had never encountered. So not only did he inherit wells, did he inherit the source of provision that would renew itself through generations, he was able to establish a well himself. And that's my prayer for you today even as we continue to uncover this word, that God will not only enable you to redig the wells of your fathers, that you will become the man or woman of God who shall dig new wells that the generations that are to come shall drink from. God bless you, Transformers. Mm -hmm.